And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Howdy folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're looking at a game called Ten. Not the best name for a game, but we are in an industry where we've named games The Game, too. So I guess 10 is better than that. And it is descriptive. In this game, you're trying not to go over 10. Think of this as a very mild version of Blackjack, where you're trying to draw cards, but not go over 10. But also, it's Rummy-esque, where you're trying to collect runs of numbers. I'll show you. Playing with a deck here, the size of the deck is determined by the number of players, but in that deck we have four different color cards that are going to be numbered from 1 to 8, although there's more of the lower cards than there is the higher ones. You also have wild cards, this could be any color, this could be any number, but it's orange. And you have currency cards that go from 1 to 5. Each player starts with 5 chips, uh, bidding chips, and then one player starts. On a player's turn, they're going to turn over the top card from the deck. This is going to be anything, that 1 through 9, one of the currency cards. And you can then take this card and put it face up in front of you, although you can push your luck and draw more cards. But I never want the total of these cards to go over 10. Oh, this is a currency card. A currency card actually counts as negative. So 6 minus 5, my total is now 1. I can easily draw another card. Ooh, my total is 4. Ooh, should I push my luck? Oh, another 4. That's 8. I could stop here, I could keep drawing, this busts. Now, let's say I stopped at any point. If I stop here, I have two choices. I can take all the numbered cards and put them in front of me, or I can take the currency card, so this would give me five currency. Now, if I take the numbers, every other player at the table gets the currency that's there. Now, you do have a limit of 10 of these currency chips, so you can't take more than that. So you have to make these decisions, and I might have made the decision sooner, I might have taken this currency. If you take the currency, the cards go over next to the market. The market is always available at the end of your turn. You can buy a card from the market if you took numbers. So if you take numbers, you can buy a card from market. So let's say in a future turn, I took this six blue, and I'm like, I also want that four. I would simply pay four to take that. So you can bust if your total ever goes over 10, or if the number of currency tokens is also over 10 on the cards in front of you. If you bust, and you bust the numbers, then everyone will get all the currency that is showing. Now when you do bust, you get a token here that is worth three. That's a bust token, and that counts over your limit. And this is gonna matter because if a card ever turned over is wild in any way or fashion, then there's a once around bid. Starting with the person to your left, that person can bid any number of chips. Remember this counts as three. You can also bid cards. Let's say you have two of the same card and you don't need it anymore. You can bid that as one. And you have to go higher than the last person, but the person who drew the card gets the final bid. And whoever wins the bid will pay that amount and take that card and put it face up in front of them. And you're just going to keep doing this until the deck runs out of cards. At that point, scoring. At the end of the game, you're going to score for each color your longest consecutive run of that color. So for example here, I have two, six, seven, eight of blue. So the six, seven, eight gives me three points. I have a three and a five. So they're not consecutive, so I just get one point for one number. Here I have a four and a five, so that would give me two points. And then here I have a one, two, three. I got two, three, so I don't need that one. One, two, three, four, five. So that gives me a run of five. If you get a complete run of one through nine, you get a bonus point of one. So you would get 10 for having that complete run. You add the points together, and whoever has the most points is the winner. If there's a tie, then currency, leftover currency, will decide who wins. The game comes with a full-fledged deck here. Now, I don't know. It's already, they're not great quality cards. And mine are already showing a little bit of wear. We've played this a lot. Some people are going to love or hate the different things. I mean, I like that each background's different, so even if you have t t trouble telling the colors, you'll still know which one's which because of the, the you know, the, the vibes. This has this kind of funky vibe. I like it, actually. It works for me, but some people might not. 
you have these little cards that help you with the, when you draw cards and busting. Most people I found understand it pretty quickly, but these cards also help because if one of them tells you who first player is, you hand them out randomly. These feel like cheap Go chips to me. In fact, maybe that's actually what they are. They're okay, they're not like amazing, but they do fit nicely in the packaging. So it's a pretty small package with very extensive clear rules on how to play. Now this game from AEG is from the same design team that brought us the fantastic and marvelous Point Salad. And you can tell, this is a very light, easy going game that I think should be sold in mass market stores. Now I've tried this with all the different player accounts. Well, no, okay, that's a lie. I've not played this with one. I haven't played the solo rules and I've not played it with two, but I played it with three through five and it Seems like it works with all, well with all those, but I like it best with five. The more people involved, the more interesting the bidding is. There's a lot of fun elements to this game. First of all, there's the will I bust or won't I? Drawing cards. And in this game, the rule book actually tells you the cards that are in the game. And I always explain this to people before I play. So let's say we're playing, for example, with the full complement of five players. I think it's important that everybody knows that there is a one through nine of each color, and there's only one set of seven through nine. There's two, three sets of four through six, and there's three sets of one through three in a five-player game. In a three-player game, there's only two sets of four through six and one set of seven through nine. And again, you're like, why does that matter? Because when a seven shows up of a blue, for example, that's the only blue seven in the entire deck. And you need to know that if you're trying to make a run. Now, yes, there is a seven wild, and there's also a wild of that color. So there's two other chances you have to finish it, but you gotta be careful about that and keep that in mind. So if you like card counting on a very, very uh, low level, I'm not talking about high level card counting, you would enjoy this. But that flipping the card over and then, of course, having the currency go down and up, that adds a little bit of, ooh, what should I do next? And when currency cards come up, you're like, yay, they just subtracted. My number's lower. But also now I make a choice. If I take the numbers, I'm giving everyone else that currency. And that currency matters. And that's because of the second part, whenever a wild card shows up, and there is a good amount of wild cards in here. There's one for every number and one for every color. So that's 14 wild cards. So there'll be 14 auctions over the course of the game. And when, oh, and then there's one wow wild. So there's 15. Um, but when you draw a, a wild card, there's that once around auction, you have to sit there and say, do I spend all my money on this? Um, if I bid this much, I can at least force these people to be out. And that kind of works together. And I really like that when you bust, you get a three point value chip. So sometimes busting is not the worst thing that can happen. I don't think it's ever great, but it comes together in a game that's gonna have laugh out loud moments. That you're not really sure who wins at the end of the game. You're kind of keeping track of what people are collecting, but it's not that strong. It's more about the interaction. You're watching that one person hoping they bust because that gives you money. You're watching that person hoping they bust because it's funny. You don't want to bust. And then when the auctions come up, they're a simple once around auction, which I think just offers a nice little dagger like, ha ha, I bid five because no one else can outbid me. But now I'm out of chips, so I better be careful. Just a fun game. I don't think it's complete big strategy and interestingly enough I played it with some of the other games back to back and I still think Point Salad is the best game that these folks have come up with but 10 is solid. I am concerned that some people are not going to want to play this because it's not attractive as it's attractive but it's attractive in a way that this looks like a game sold at Walmart and you walk by and go Uno 10 man and you keep going I don't know if this is going to draw people in but I really liked it it has that blackjack feeling, has a little bit of auctioning in it, and then a simple scoring at the end. I mean, really simple. Everyone can count their score up really quickly. So it's fun, but it also is casual enough that you can kind of talk about other things and have a good time with playing. It plays through very quickly, you know, because you're just drawing cards, drawing cards. It keeps you entertained. It's a very nice welcoming game. Pretty neat. That's 10. I'm Tom Vassell. You've been watching the Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment approved. <laughs>